good evening. My name is Josh, and um, I'm ha really happy to be here with you this evening and uh, just give you an idea for what's going to happen tonight. I'm going to play a bunch of guitar stuff for you, and uh, then I'm going to share a little bit of my story with you. And uh, after that, my wife's going to come up. She's going to sing uh, just one song and then share a little bit with you as well. And, uh, but there's one thing that's not going to happen tonight, and that's that uh, I'm not going to sing for you. And there's a very important reason for that, and that is that I can't sing. It's really, it's pretty bad, actually. Um, but uh, God gave me a gift for music, and um, so I'm going uh, yeah, to play some guitar stuff for you. You know, a lot of people, they, they say, they try to console me. They say, you know, it's okay that you can't sing because you make the guitar sing, and that's very sweet of them to say, but if that's true, I want to make the guitar sing praises to God. And so, um, some of the songs I'll play will be some hymns, or there's some folk stuff, all sorts of different things. My dad is actually, uh, he taught me to play guitar when I was six years old, because he was the pastor of a little church, and he needed a worship team, right? So, uh, what are else their pastor's kids for, other than to do the work of the kingdom of God, I suppose? <laughs> but, um, no, just kidding, we'll have a reward in heaven, I'm sure. But... Um, yeah, he was a bluegrass guy, though. He was from West Virginia, and everything that he plays is bluegrass. So I'm going to play uh, uh, just kind of in honor of him. I'm going to play for you my bluegrass rendition of Off Fly Away. reason to sing the blues, and I hope it's the happiest blues song you ever heard. <laughs>
song that I wrote, and I call this song Fan Into Flame. And this song is just my encouragement to people to take the gifts that you have and to work hard to develop them. You know, we all have uh, different things that God's gifted us to do, and whatever it is that God's given you a gift for, just take and do with all your heart and do it for Him. So, this is Fan Into Flame.
Okay, well, I'm going to play a song for you that I just finished writing the other day. And I call this a song that I just wrote the other day. So, it's kind of a working title. song is another song that I wrote. I call this one The Whirlwind, and uh, it's what I envisioned the soundtrack to be, to the scene, if you will, in the Bible when Elijah was taken up to heaven. And so a lot of times I call it, uh, you know, The Whirlwind slash Elijah's Wild Ride. So um, I always tell people, you know the people making the movie about Elijah, because they're going to make one pretty soon, right? You think about the biblical stories, it's got to be due up. And so if you know the people making the movie, uh, tell them about me, because I got the soundtrack already done, so. <laughs> so I'm going to get famous someday. It's going to be great. <laughs> All right, yeah, this is uh, yeah, The Whirlwind. <clears throat> Thank you. 
something that's a little bit different for you here um, and uh, I'm gonna play my little guitar rendition of the Hallway Chorus for you. Usually people think of Christmas when they think of that song but you know believe it or not the first time it was performed it was actually performed at Easter so um, you yeah, know but I think that uh, that song is really it's uh, I think it fits year round but uh, the thing I love about that song is not the amazing way that it, you know, not the amazing music uh, in it as much as it is just the great reverence for God that's communicated in that song. And I hope that in some way that comes through my little guitar version of it. So this is the Hallelujah Chorus.
Thank you. I'm going to share a uh, passage from the Bible with you here just briefly. And uh, this is one of my very favorite parts of the Bible. It's in Romans 5, Romans chapter 5, verse 1, starting here. And it says, Therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also complain about our sufferings because we know that suffering produces bitterness, bitterness, anger, and anger leads to destruction. Just kidding, that's not what it says there. <laughs> You're wondering, what translation is that guy got up there anyway? That doesn't sound familiar. You know, what that verse actually says. It says, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. You know, that's a very interesting thing to say, isn't it, that we rejoice in our sufferings. That does not come naturally to me, I can tell you that. It's not the first response usually that I have, um, you know, when I wake up and be like, oh, yeah, I get to suffer today, this is just great. <laughs> Um, and I think that uh, it is a very difficult thing for us to want to rejoice in sufferings. It, is, it kind of flies in the face of humanity. We want to do anything we can to avoid suffering. Um, but you know, Paul, of course, here, he's not writing to everybody. He's writing specifically to those who have a faith in God, a faith that says, God, I trust you no matter what. And you can, uh, you can see that because uh, he says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's assuming that the recipient also has that faith uh, in Christ. And this is really where my story comes in. That I, was gonna, I told you I was going to share with you. you know, my dad is a pastor, actually, and he's been a pastor for 40 years. And uh, during that time, he's been a church planter the entire time, which means that he starts churches from scratch. And so if you can imagine what that looks like for a minute, it means no salary, no people, no building, nothing, right? Just go into a town and uh, start a church. And um, he's had a very difficult life doing that. You know, he's always had to work a 40-hour-a-week job in addition to being a pastor. And, um, and it's, been, it's been a tough way to go, but he's been faithful to God. He has loved people. He has served people, and he has he's been faithful to God. And, and uh, he shared God's love with so many people. It's been, really been amazing to watch. And also, um, you can imagine life for my mom, you know, being a mom of three young kids and then three teenagers, meanwhile having a husband who's working full-time in addition to being a pastor. And not only that, but she's always been the church secretary and piano player and Sunday school teacher and janitor and just about anything else you can think of she's been doing at the church, right? And so she's lived a very sacrificial life as well. They have both, both of my parents, they have really... They have lived a life that's just completely for God, completely, completely for the gospel, and I respect them so much. But I didn't always feel that way. You know, when my parents were, uh, when I was about 10 years old, I looked at my parents' crazy Christian life. I mean, it's just a radical, all-in kind of Christian life. I looked at it, and to be honest with you, I thought it was too much. I thought, Mom and Dad, what are you guys doing all this? You guys, you know, it's over the top. You know, if you just chill out a little bit, you'd be a lot better off, right? <laughs> And uh, you see, I had, um, I had some friends at school who, uh, you know, their families went to church every once in a while. But other than that, you never saw anything about it in their home. You know, you never heard about the gospel. You never heard them read the word or, or anything. It's just like, it was just a little tiny little piece of their life. And um, as a 10-year-old, you know, as a 10-year-old kid, I looked at these two completely different kinds of Christians, right? They could not be more different. You got this one, you know, my parents all in, and these other people are just like real casual about it. And... And I looked at these two and I thought, I want the easy one. That seems way better to me, right? You can go to church sometimes, you get your get out of hell free card, but then you can go home and watch football whenever you want. And you see, I, I didn't understand a lot of things when I was 10. You couldn't have told me though that I was very stubborn as a 10 year old, but um, I did not understand the gospel. I did not really understand God or his ways. You see, I had a very shallow faith in God, it wasn't really a faith at all. It was a faith that says, God, I'll go along with you as long as you go along with me, right? And uh, I really had a very bad attitude. See, I was selfish. I didn't trust God, didn't really trust my parents. I wanted to be the one calling the shots in my life. And when I was a little kid, when I was like 10 years old, this didn't cause too many problems because I basically had to do whatever they said or else, right? But um, by the time I got to be a teenager, this uh, started causing some trouble in our home as I started exerting my own will. 
uh, just with the hardness of my heart. But the other thing that happened when I was 15 years old, and this is where it ties in with this little verse here, is that when I was 15 years old, I encountered some suffering in my life. I encountered some things that were really tough for me that just made me, uh, that just shook my world up and left me asking, God, how can you say that you love me and then let these things happen, right? You hear people ask that kind of question all of the time. God, how can you be good and say that you love me and then let these terrible things happen? Or how could you be good and let these trials and tragedies happen all over the world, the disasters, the death, the sickness, these things that just break our hearts. How could God allow those and still be good? And that's the question I was asking. And because of my lack of faith in God, because I didn't have a faith that trusted him really, I, I looked around at my life when I was 15 and I said, God, if this is the best you can do, I'm out of here. And so I just uh, rebelled against God. And I told him I want nothing to do with him. I went my own way. I thought I knew better. I thought I could do better in my life. And so I split. And uh, you know, rebelled against my parents and against God. And um, you know, I was so angry and bitter against God that I was just really on this mission of self-destruction. And when that is your path, you arrive at your destination very quickly. And by the time I was 21 years old, my life was just a complete disaster. I didn't have any relationships with anyone I'd ever known before. I was lost in this world of criminals and drug addicts. And um, I was so in bondage to my addictions that I could not quit no matter how hard I tried. And those addictions, they, they wreaked havoc in my life. My relationships were a disaster. Um, you know, I was homeless for a time. I was in and out of different living situations. I couldn't hold down a job. My life was just a big wreck. And um, there was this night uh, about, uh, it was just uh, almost 15 years ago now. And uh, I remember it because I'd been staying in this house with these drug dealers for a time. And usually there's people coming and going all of the time. There's just tons of people there at this house. But this one night, I was there all by myself. And because of that, I was forced to be sober for the first time in a long time. And that night in my sobriety, I just, I was thinking about my situation, the hopelessness of it. You see all these things, um, you know, my addictions and all these things, they were like the outward symptoms of an inward sickness. Really the sickness was just that I was, I felt such guilt in my heart. I was so ashamed of myself and this person I'd become. I thought, how could the little boy that I was become this monster of a person that I am now? I was just, just so deeply ashamed. And, um, you know, this night, I was so, I was just so broken. And to be honest with you, I considered taking my own life. But I had what I believe now to be a Holy Spirit moment when I remembered that gospel that I had heard preached growing up so many times, the story about this Jesus that would offer second chances, this Jesus that would forgive sins, that set the captives free, that even offered the dead man new life. And I just wondered in my great despair that night if he could still forgive me. You know, I had known the truth of the gospel and I'd walked away from it. I spit right in Jesus' face and I knew it. And I, and I just, I wondered if he could still forgive me for that. And not only that, but there's all those things that I did that I'm too ashamed to even think of now. I wonder, could he still forgive me after all this? And so that night, I just got down to my knees in that drug dealer's living room and I just cried out to God with everything that I was. I asked God, please, will you forgive me for all this? I thought I knew better and I was so wrong. I've destroyed my life. I've made a big wreck of it. God, will you please, will you take me back for you? Just, I, I want to come and follow you now for real. I want you to be not just what I call my savior, but I want you to be my Lord. I want you to make the decisions and I will follow you wherever you lead. See, in that moment, I finally surrendered to him. I wasn't just looking for a way to get out of hell. I was looking for a Lord, a savior, someone to rescue me from my life, someone to follow. And you know, the beauty of the gospel is is that because of what Jesus did on the cross, now someone like me can stand before God Almighty as if I'd never even sinned. Amen. Because the righteousness of Jesus is all God sees when he looks at me. Because all my sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus. And he changed my life forever all in that one moment. He didn't just make me feel better. He removed my actual guilt. And that's an incredible miracle, isn't it? The best miracle Jesus ever did. He did some great miracles too, but they remove our sin. That is an incredible thing that he did, and I'm so deeply grateful for it. It changed my life forever. It's the greatest moment in the history of the human experience. It changed everything for us, all in that one moment. It's an incredible thing, the gospel. 
And that's why our family does what we do. That's why we travel around and share the gospel with whoever we can because we have a hope in Christ that no one else can know apart from Christ. It is an incredible thing. You know, there's something really interesting about my little story here, and that's that uh, when I was a kid, I did not understand the way that my parents lived. But I get it now. I really do. You see, they weren't trying to earn their salvation. They weren't trying to impress God with the way that they lived. They weren't trying to impress anybody else. They had been touched by the gospel. They had been touched by the grace of God. And they realized that the only life that really made sense was to live a life where they lived their life as a living sacrifice for this great God who would not withhold his son from them. You know, every year that I, I live, I see more and more how the things of this world that, we, that I care so deeply about, uh, they're passing away, they come to nothing, they're meaningless. Only a life lived for the gospel is a life well lived. And my parents, they got that. And I, I see it now, and I, that's the kind of Christian I want to be. And believe me, I'm a long ways from it. But it's a worthy pursuit. Into this life, it would be the only real pursuit that was, that was worth it. There's one more thing I want to touch on about this passage here. And that's this idea of suffering. You know, before I was a traveling Christian musician, I was a carpenter. I can tell you that as a carpenter, it is very easy, actually, to take beautiful materials and make something beautiful out of those materials. With a little bit of training and the right tools, anybody can do it. But it's a whole different thing to take something old and rotten and messed up, something that's broken, something that looks like it's fit for the garbage, to be able to take that and restore it and make something beautiful out of it. That takes a master craftsman. That is an incredible feat. And that is what God does when he takes the things in this world that he never intended to be here in the first place, the death, the sickness, the heartache, all these things that just, that just really do break our hearts, when he takes these things and twists them around and uses them for our good, he reveals his great glory and his great power. And you know, that is an easy thing to stand up here and say, and it's a tough thing to really live out and trust when you're in that moment of suffering. And when I was 16, I was not ready to do it. But I'm ready now, and even now it doesn't come easy. And I don't pretend to know what some of you might be going through. Some of you might be going through some things that are just really unthinkable. And um, I don't pretend to understand the specifics of why, but I can promise you this. God's word says, don't believe it because I say it, believe it because God's word says whatever it is, God will use it for your good. He will use it to mold you more into his image. You know, sometimes the wood doesn't like being, but doesn't like being carved. It's painful. Sometimes huge chunks need cut off, but that's, that's what it, the way it is with us. God uses that suffering in our life in ways that we can't even imagine. And sometimes we get to look back and see, okay, God, I understand why you did that. And other times we never get to see this side of heaven, why he's doing the things that he does. We can't understand sometimes, but... We can trust him through it. He is good. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <coughs> My wife, Sarah, is going to come up. And um, actually, I'm sorry, I forgot. I was gonna, <laughs> she pointed out to me. I was going to play one song for you first. And this is, um, I'm going to play one of my very favorite old hymns. And this is the hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And whenever I uh, play this thing, I always just think about uh, God's great love for us.
share a song with you here that may be familiar. So please, um, if you know it, feel free to sing along. I love this song because, um, because sometimes we need the gospel just laid out there, really clear. Even if you've been walking with the Lord for a while, sometimes we need a reminder of the significance of what Jesus did for us and the significance of what the Father did when he sent his Son on our behalf. sisters um, got a little more than their fair share of athletic abilities and artistic talents and all that. I feel like I got a little bit shortchanged, but I could sing. That's, that was my thing. That's what I could do. And I never had any grandiose ambitions of being the greatest singer in the world. I didn't want to be rich and famous, um, but I loved to sing. And I knew that God had given me a gift for singing, and so I sang all the time. As a kid, I sang in school, and I sang at church. And as I grew up, I continued to do that. I sang in high school and in college. And um, 
for me, singing was just, just part of who I am. Sarah sings. That's just what I do. So when Josh and I got married, and he was already doing music ministry as well, we knew very early on that God had called us to music ministry as a couple. And we believe that God had called us to a full-time music ministry. But in the meantime, we gave as much as we could of our time and our effort um, in music ministry. So we uh, served at our home church, directing the worship team there, and um, mentored some of the younger musicians. We also wrote and recorded and traveled a little bit. And for us, um, as a couple, our music, our goal was always to use it to spread the gospel. Our desire was to use it to tell people about the good news of Jesus and to encourage believers in, in worshiping the King. Um, like Josh, I also grew up in a Christian home, but my story is a little bit different in that um, for as long as I can remember, I have loved Jesus. I haven't always obeyed well. I haven't always followed perfectly, but my heart has always loved Jesus, and my desire has been to serve him and to obey him. Um, and so for me, singing was the most natural way for me to express my love for Jesus. I, um, singing was how I served in the church, and singing was how I told God that I loved him. It's how I worshiped. Um, in 2011, Josh and I were recording a worship album, and we were directing worship at our home church. And early that year, we caught the eye of some Christian music industry people in the Seattle area. And it looked like doors were finally opening for us to have a music career. We had been um, working towards that, praying for that for seven years. And our desire was to be able to give all of our time, all of our effort, all of our resources in music ministry. And it looked like doors were opening for that. And we were so excited, just full of anticipation to see what it was that God was going to do. But that year, something started to change in my voice. And um, in the summer, I started to get hoarse. At first, I thought I was sick, and then I thought I had allergies. But after several months of um, doctor appointments and um, specialized voice therapy, in January of 2012, um, my doctor told me that my, uh, my voice would never be the same, that I would never be a singer again. I, I could no longer sing. And it was <coughs> devastating. <coughs> everything that I knew about myself, everything that we had been as a couple, it just was like, it was like my whole world came crashing down around me and I didn't even know who I was anymore. I was so lost. I couldn't imagine a life where I couldn't sing with my husband. It's what we had been doing together since we met. I couldn't imagine a life where I couldn't sing my little boys to sleep at night. I couldn't imagine a Christmas where I wasn't gathered with my sisters singing Christmas carols together. But most significantly was I had no idea how to express my love for my Savior without my voice. I was angry and I was confused. And I remember crying out to God, why would you do this to me? Don't you know I was using my voice for you? Don't you know that without my voice, I am nobody. I have nothing to offer you or anyone else. We are so blessed to serve a God who lets us ask those questions. He lets us come to him with our anger and our frustration and our confusion. And he waited patiently and listened while I vented my heartache week after week after week. But when I was finally willing to be quiet and to listen to him, he spoke such sweet words of comfort to my heart. And I heard him speak to me and tell me, I know this hurts. I know you don't understand. But I need you to trust me. I need you to know that I love you. And I need you to give this up for me. And so I did. I chose to believe that God is faithful because he says he is faithful. I chose to take him at his word. 
And what he did next was far greater than anything I could have asked or imagined. Because you see, over the years, all those years of going to church, of loving Jesus, of serving, somewhere along the line, I had come to believe that God loves me because I love him. But when I didn't feel like I had any way to tell him I love him, when I was just angry and hurt and confused, he still loved me. I had not understood that love before. You see, the Bible says that God loves us because God is love. It's who he is. It doesn't have anything to do with what I do for him, what I have to offer him. The Bible also says that we love because he first loved us. You see, I didn't understand that God's love for me wasn't conditional. It wasn't as long as I was doing what I felt like I should do. It wasn't as long as I had something special to offer. He just loved me. And there is nothing like that love. Of course, you know now the surprising end to my story, and that is that um, about this time last year, God chose to heal my voice. When I was first sharing this testimony, my story kind of ended a second ago. Um, but God and his great tendency to surprise us, <coughs> he healed me, and I am grateful. I love to sing. But we serve a God who is a healer. He, he heals physical bodies, but he also heals hearts. And he saw a wound in me that I didn't even know was there. And he was willing to do what was necessary to make sure that I understood how big his love is for me. And I am so grateful. I wouldn't trade it for the world. And I could wake up tomorrow morning completely mute and I would still be so full of joy because God loves me. It just doesn't get any better than that. We live in a world that is full of brokenness and a heartache and a hurt. You can't ignore it. You can't get away from it. And I know that sometimes we have the blessing of coming to the other side of our struggle. Like me, I can look back now and especially now that he's healed me, and I can see what it was that God was doing. But I know also that just like Josh shared earlier, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes we never know. We never understand completely what it is that God is doing. But I would encourage you, whatever you're struggling with, don't turn from God. Run to him. You can trust him. He, he can be trusted with your questions, with your fears, with your confusion. His love, it's, it goes beyond all of that. So <coughs> run to him. Take those questions to him. Take those hurts to him. Because he is so faithful. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share. Josh said that he was blessed to be with us, but I, I think we've been blessed that he's been with, with us this evening, wouldn't you say? Yes. So, thank you for, for coming and sharing with us and, and, and sharing your talents and for what you do. They came from Woodland this morning. They're um, on the road. They're touring. They have their, their family with them, and this is their ministry. And so what I would like to do is for us to take a... Um, a love offering for them to, to help keep them on the road, help keep them um, going forward, spreading the gospel. So let's uh, let's pray. Father, we uh, are just reminded once again of your love for us. And so we thank you for that. It's, it's a love that goes beyond our understanding. I, I thank you for this, this ministry of Josh and Sarah. And I, I just pray that uh, you would bless their journeys, that you would keep them safe, that you would just continue to use them. I pray for their children, Caden and Noah, and ask, Father, for your, your, your blessings to be upon them to 
uh, being on the road is, is probably difficult. And so I, I just pray, Father, that uh, you'll give them wisdom. And I pray, Father, that uh, you will just uh, hold them in your palm and, and, and remind them of your presence as they're out doing uh, what you've called them to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I was, uh, just want to again tell you all thanks so much for coming and I hope that this been, has been a blessing to you. Um, you know, we do travel full time and back there at our table we have little like prayer cards that have, you know, have some information as far as our website and stuff but uh, if you would, you know, take one of those and, and stick it somewhere where you'd remember to pray for us, we'd really appreciate it. You know, uh, we encounter all kinds of difficulties, you know, living life, just traveling all the time and so... Um, discouragement is one of the biggest one of the biggest things that we struggle with. So if you pray for us, we'd appreciate it. Um, also back there, we have three different instrumental guitar CDs, and they sound just like what I did tonight. So there's no mistakes in the CDs. So uh, no, but those are um, they're all two of them are like hymns and, and worship songs like I played tonight with some of the stuff I've written, and one of them is a Christmas CD. So um, and those are all just ten dollars and help to uh, help us on our way. So anyways, thank you all so much. And if any of you. Um, want to talk about the guitar, if you're a guitar player, you want to uh, figure out how I did something, come talk to me, I'd love to talk with you about it, um, or if you can teach me something, that's great too, that's even better, so um, thank you so much, and God bless you all, have a great night. <laughs>